Max Payne 3 is a cinematic third-person shooter developed and published by Rockstar Games. Released 2012. You play as Max Payne, an ex-cop with just about nothing left to lose, and a constant target on his back. If you've played the previous games, you'll know about Max's adventures and how the first game, released in 2001, set the bar for stylish action combat. Now, Max Payne 3 shifts from New York to Brazil, where Max has been hired as private security for a wealthy family targeted by vicious gangs. But there's more than just a different setting in this most recent installment. It also introduced a plethora of new gameplay mechanics, and of course, brand new gunplay. From the moment you blast your first enemy away, you'll realize there's something special about the gunplay of Max Payne 3. The way your targets react to getting shot is honestly nothing short of incredible. Since GTA 4, Rockstar have been known for their physics-based movement and ragdoll systems. But it wasn't really used to its fullest potential until Max Payne 3. And there's no health bars in real life, so in reality when somebody's shot, they'll stumble and fall, and it's never clean. Max Payne 3 sets out to replicate this as closely as possible, and it certainly succeeds. Every single bullet can be felt ripping through your target's body, and each shot has actual force behind it. You can see the subtle body movements reacting to each round. There are no entirely pre-made death animations, so each shot actually means something. The force depends on the caliber as well, so bigger and more powerful guns will knock enemies back, or even launch them into the air, spinning in circles. Now, this obviously isn't realistic, but in a game that features unsurvivable action movie set pieces, I think a few exaggerated ragdolls fit in just fine. The difference in force between the small and large weapons of Max Payne 3 really illustrates a variation in its arsenal that pretty much every game should have. Weapons feel unique from one another, but all convey a satisfying feeling of power. However, even though the guns feel powerful, you may notice that with small caliber weapons, some enemies will soak up a very high number of rounds. A lot more than you'd probably expect in a usual third-person shooter game. But as much as I like to criticize tanky enemies in video games, in Max Payne 3 I actually think it deserves a pass, since your bullets don't just bounce off like nothing happened. Every single shot that hits your target has a reaction that affects the enemy's movement and naturally lowers their precision, so it's still quite easy to manage large groups of targets. Plus, this is all assuming you're aiming for the body, not the head. Headshots on any unarmored enemies result in an instant kill. In fact, this is where most of the fun, at least for me, comes from. Using Max's slow-motion diving to sail through the air and land consecutive headshots is one of my most gratifying video game experiences in recent memory. Plus, headshots still look really good, visually. They're made even better with the cinematic camera that highlights the impact of your final shot on the last target in a group of bad guys. Sometimes the camera gets a bit buggy or shows a bad angle, but for the most part it succeeds to show off the excellent ragdolls. However, the impact and satisfaction of each shot isn't purely due to the wobbly enemies. Bullet entry and exit wounds are as disgusting as ever. They're uncomfortably detailed with skin peeling back and accompanied by large sprays of blood. When using a shotgun or automatic weapon, the blood can actually get a bit crazy. Normally, I'm of the philosophy that a game can never have too much blood, but in this case, it probably could have been dialed back just a little bit, especially since it can be a bit hard to tell when your enemy's actually dead. It's very common for a guy to fall down but promptly get back up and continue shooting, which makes Max Payne 3's kill indicator a welcome addition. It's now another staple of Rockstar games, featured in GTA V and Red Dead Redemption 2. But that subtle little glow that appears on screen every time you get a kill is actually quite nice. It's the equivalent of a hit marker from a game like Call of Duty, such a minor detail that until now I never really thought much about. But when used right, it can help to improve the feeling of impact in a game's gunplay. But let's not just consider bullet impacts on enemies. Most levels in Max Payne 3 feel like carefully crafted shooting galleries set up for destruction. And there's more than just bullet impact decals on walls. Things can actually break. Corners of concrete, televisions, filing cabinets, and more. Most props can be shot to bits with particles and effects spraying into the air. And the best example of all this would have to be the office level, which usually leads to me intentionally missing targets to break as much stuff as possible. I can't help but think of the iconic shootout scene from The Matrix, which was definitely an inspiration for this series of games. So despite a couple of very minor issues, Max Payne 3 still manages to achieve one of the most satisfying feelings of impact I have ever experienced in a video game. Gun sound effects in Max Payne 3 aren't over the top. They don't blow out your eardrums with every pull of the trigger, but they also don't sound like weak firecrackers. They're sharp. Small weapons pop, and larger ones bang. At first glance, they might seem pretty average, but if you listen closely, you'll notice they're actually incredibly detailed. Not just the actual gunshot, but also every sound directly around the gunshots, like the slide or bolt racking back and forth, the bullets ricocheting off varying surfaces, and the bloody sound of a slug carving through a body. 
And personally, what I find most impressive is the sound of shells ejecting from your weapons. Max Payne 3's sound design is so detailed that the noise of ejected shells hitting the ground varies based off the surface they hit. And not only do we have this incredible sound design, but every little effect also has positional audio. So if your shells land at the left of your screen, you'll hear them out of your left ear. And those details certainly come together when engaged in a large firefight. When bullets are flying every which way, environments are breaking apart, and armed goons are dropping like flies, well that's when Max Payne 3's sound design is at its best. Have a listen. But as excellent as the sound design is, there is one big issue looming over it all. Compression. Pretty much every audio effect in the game is compressed into lower quality. I never noticed it much back in the days of playing on a PS3 with an old flat screen TV, but now on a PC with decent headphones, this issue definitely rears its ugly head. It's easier to notice with different characters' voices and Max's narration, but the guns fall victim to the problem as well. Now, I'm no expert on audio. I don't actually know much about the subject at all, or how any of it really works. But all that being said, I can definitely tell that the bitrate for Max Payne 3's sound effects feels just a bit too low. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to notice it on this video, since YouTube has its own compression on top of everything, but it's just a problem that I really wish wasn't present. Honestly, it's not even close to being enough to prevent me from enjoying the gunplay. The sound design is still incredibly good, but just don't expect it to have perfect clarity. When playing a first-person shooter, your gun is usually right up in your face, so naturally you'd want it to be as detailed as possible. But with a third-person shooter, the weapon isn't usually where the player's focus lies. So a lot of games in this genre tend to skimp on the weapon details, especially when it comes to animations. We've seen plenty of games practically ignore this aspect. So when I first played Max Payne 3, well, damn was I surprised. Weapon animations, particularly reload animations, are better than what I've seen in a lot of first-person shooters. They're unabrupt and smooth, and flow perfectly with the rest of Max's movements, especially when in cover. Some guns, like shotguns that reload using shells, can be a little bit uglier than the rest. But most pistols and rifles look fantastic. My favorite being the AK-47, with its stunning details and fluid handling. Speaking of, one of my favorite things about Max's animations is the weapon system. You can carry two sidearms and one rifle. When you're using your rifle, both pistols will be holstered, but when you take out a pistol, Max will carry the rifle in his left hand, an animation that carries over into cutscenes. Now sure, I do kind of miss carrying an entire arsenal in the original Max Payne, but I'm still totally fine with the way it works now. Plus, this three-weapon system allows for some other extra nicely detailed animations. For example, when reloading a sidearm while also carrying a rifle, the long gun doesn't just disappear. Max tucks it under his arm while he grabs and inserts a new magazine. The same goes for when popping painkillers to regain health. And that slow-mo can that I mentioned during the impact segment, well, it's also great for showing off some of the beautiful animations from different perspectives, especially following a bullet spinning through the air to find its target. This animation is most prevalent in the sniper section of the stadium level. Now, as much as I despise this sequence for its overly linear nature, I have to admit, it's really awesome watching your bullet travel a huge distance in slow motion to finally hit your target Sniper Elite style, minus the X-ray cam, of course. All of this stuff is really cool, but perhaps the most important animations in the game are the subtle ones. There's some really nice recoil animations for each weapon. They don't kick too much or too little, and they're also not abrupt. But that's not even the coolest part. What we want to look at is Max's body. Look at the way that his shoulders pushed back from the force of the rifle. The same effect happens when holding a pistol two-handed, but this time with both shoulders, since the recoil is evenly distributed to both arms. Another instance of incredible attention to detail. Rockstar went above and beyond in just about every aspect, even the ones that most games ignore. But still, shouldn't pretend that it's perfect. There's a decent amount of jankiness with certain animations. Diving through the air normally looks and feels fantastic, but when performing said action with a rifle, Max's hands can get all kinds of twisted up. Kinda hard for him to look badass when his hands aren't working right. And though transitioning into cover is alright, moving around in cover can feel stiff. This could be a problem when under heavy fire and trying to avoid getting shot. The same issue is present with blind firing. It feels much less polished than most of the other animations in the game. But aside from that, it's hard to find more issues without getting nitpicky. And there's still even more interesting animations like the brutal close quarters takedowns that you can execute on nearby enemies. But it's very rarely used, since rushing in usually means death in all but the most confined areas. And finally, there's the muzzle flashes of guns. They're not the highest quality, but they include details like the little extra bits of metal shooting out of the barrel. A nice little touch of realism to make the guns feel a bit nicer. 
The only muzzle flash that stands out from the rest is the Micro 9mm SMG. It looks oddly cartoonish, but I'm pretty sure that it's actually meant as an homage to Max Payne 1's Ingram SMG, so I actually kinda love it. Overall, mostly everything looks really nice. Rockstar's fluid animation system can work wonders, but it seems there are a few times where it can't quite figure out how to handle player movement. Max can't move like he used to. He's gotten older and hasn't exactly quit drinking. So while previous games had you platforming and spinning through the air performing intricate moves, Max Payne 3 makes you feel a lot heavier, a bit closer to being a human being, which I think makes sense given the context of the story. But this actually makes judging the weight of the game's gunplay a lot easier, because we don't just have the player input to go off of, but also Max's movements. And most of the time, weight is actually portrayed fairly well. One of the best indicators of this is hip firing. Whenever you pull the trigger of a rifle without zooming in, Max will keep the gun lowered and hip fire it. Now most games still consider hip firing to be shooting with a rifle to your shoulder, just not aiming down sights. But Max Payne 3 shows that it recognizes just how heavy guns really are, and how exhausting it can be to keep one raised all the time. So the small detail of Max keeping the gun lowered alone does well to depict weight. But on the topic of smaller weapons such as pistols or SMGs, they feel a lot more controllable due to their lower weight. But of course some automatic weapons tend to suffer when it comes to precision, since they kick all over the place. And the animations that I talked about earlier also add to the feeling of weight, such as Max holding his rifle under his arm while reloading his pistol. And just the simple fact that you're only capable of carrying a realistic amount of firearms rather than an entire arsenal with thousands of rounds of ammunition makes the guns feel a bit more like actual objects, not just weightless pieces of plastic. Well, most of the time anyways. This plays back into animation, but while performing certain actions, weight can feel a bit off. Blind firing is one such problem. The way Max holds his rifle over cover feels kind of strange. And that diving animation I mentioned earlier, well, I'm still honestly not sure if it's intentional or a bug, but one-handing a rifle like that still makes it feel like it doesn't weigh much at all. But at the same time, Max also physically interacts with his environment while moving around. Diving into a wall or an enemy will cause an actual collision, with Max reacting just about how you'd expect. So typically, weight in Max Payne 3 is very good, save for a few wonky animations, but it still handles better than the majority of games out there. Like most aspects, accuracy is handled differently in third-person games. I've established that accuracy refers to whether or not bullets feel as if they're actually coming out of the barrel of your gun. Pretty straightforward most of the time. But with Max Payne 3, things aren't exactly as they seem. Usually throughout the game, the weapons feel fantastic. And you can even watch in slow motion the exact trajectory of your bullets during final kill cams. So everything appears just fine. But that's because it can't exactly aim down your sights. Except you can, but only using a gun equipped with a red dot scope attachment. When using one of these, accuracy seems to work a bit differently. Just have a look at the tracers. Bullets don't just come out of the barrel. They kind of just spawn in the air and fly in various directions while your crosshair stays centered. This kind of makes the inaccuracy of automatic weapons feel a bit unjustified, as the bullet trajectories don't always correspond with weapon movement. But the thing is that this issue is really only apparent when using a weapon with a scope on it. And for the vast majority of the game, these types of weapons are pretty rare. And even when I can use one, I usually don't. When you're shooting an iron-sighted weapon like an AK, well, honestly, it feels pretty good. However, another issue that does come up with a third-person point of view is the game occasionally failing to figure out exactly where you're trying to shoot. It's another very rare occurrence, but if your crosshair is pointed at an object in front of Max, even if his gun is pointed nowhere near it, the game will assume you're trying to shoot the object and adjust accordingly. That normally would make sense, but when hitboxes on environmental objects aren't always perfect, this can lead to your bullets being blocked by small invisible barriers. However, like I said, it's not a super common issue, so I've only experienced it a few times. Plus, if the game instead prioritized the position of your gun's barrel to calculate bullet trajectories, I'm pretty sure we'd have to deal with constantly shooting into walls and barriers way more often. Despite being realistic, we've seen this cause plenty of issues in other games. So save for a couple criticisms. Accuracy in Max Payne 3 usually works pretty well. It's still really easy to pop off consecutive headshots very quickly with just about any type of weapon, so you generally don't have to worry too much about your bullets missing your target, as long as you've got some decent aim. The game compensates for Max's abilities by throwing large numbers of trigger-happy enemies his way, which also leads to the player needing to utilize slow motion diving to avoid swarms of bullets while continuing to down targets. Now there doesn't seem to be much if any penalty to accuracy while diving, so fly to your heart's content. Aside from a couple minor annoyances here and there, accuracy in Max Payne 3 works pretty well, as long as you stay away from scopes that change your perspective. Max Payne 3 is honestly a one-of-a-kind game. It combines excellent shooting mechanics, fun diving in slow motion, and incredible ragdolls in animation to provide some of the most satisfying gunplay in the genre. If that's what you're looking for, Max Payne 3 should be near the top of your list. But I would also recommend playing all three games in order if possible. It's definitely one of my favorite trilogies of all time. Plus, Max Payne 3 is Rockstar's best game. Yeah, I said it, what are you gonna do, fight me?